This is insane. You manifested a woman with your mind. You can't tell anybody. Not mom. Not Susie. So no. What, we're just gonna pretend she's your girlfriend. She is my girlfriend. Stranger things have happened. I don't think so. I think this is pretty much the strangest thing that's ever happened, ever. I'm quite struck by Zoe's script. It, it's very wise about the way we romanticize people in relationships. And for her and Paul to, to have come to it with, with that kind of wisdom already, it's a little intimidating, I, I think. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. And when you read it the first time, what was your response? Well, we loved that about it. We loved that it, um, you know, it was a very economical, kind of simply told story that touched on all these more complex issues and had both comedy and some real dramatic aspects to it or potential for that. Um, and, you know, knowing Zoe, talking to her a little bit about it, we realized that this, this can be a really great collaboration. So we took it on. Well, I love that the choices you made, there's, there's obviously there's the big budget version of this and the sort of the broader right. Hollywood version. But I love that there's no explanation for the magic, that there's no effect at any point in the film, that you really keep that very simple and almost off off camera. Um, was that a, a conscious choice up front to really ground that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love the idea that we could tell this fantastic story with this very high concept, but we would do it in a very real, almost matter-of-fact way. You know, that magic exists in the world and we don't need to see a lot of hocus-pocus. We're just going like, to live our lives and something very wild is going to happen and we're just going to treat it absolutely like because to try to make sense of it would be kind of like to show a shooting star or fairy dust wouldn't necessarily explain it anymore <laughs> I, I know that uh, Danny Rubin talked about wrestling with that on Groundhog Day uh -huh. and, yes. the, and they air on the side of let's not show anything yeah. let's yeah. really have just no explanation buy into yes. it you want your audience to buy in as early as possible I think and then forget about it just get involved in the story and I think for us, that's always the most important thing: is how do we invest in these characters, and you know, how do we get our audience invested as early as possible? Um, and I think, you know, it's a it's a very fun premise, but really, what mattered to us was the emotional journey that these characters were going to go on. My one hesitation walking in: um, I always get nervous watching films about writers because it's such an internal yes. process, yeah. and I always wonder: can you make it externally interesting? And also, can you? really show an audience what it's like to wrestle with the blank page. We love the script and there was, you know, we, we made a challenge of what's the film that's going to emerge from this and we love that at the center was a typewriter which by its nature is a much more physical, dynamic, filmic device oh, and we love the idea of, you know, how are we going to film all the keys and, and you know, br really bring it to it, life. It dramatizes writing a little more than usual, but also the, the typewriter helped give Calvin the sense of isolation, that he it's not a portable object, he, mm -hmm. he's stuck in his house, he doesn't have access to the internet when he's writing. You know, there was even more, a more kind of claustrophobic quality, and I think, um, you know, we related to the story of Calvin because there is that expectation that when you've done something that's that's Absolutely. done well and people have paid attention to and now you got to come out with something else and that can be very paralyzing and you know ultimately what happens to him is he just gets involved with the thing that he created you know he, and you stop thinking about how it how successful it might be you just get involved with it and and it's very much like making a film when you're making it you're not thinking is this going to be successful I, you know you forget about that and you just get immersed and, and the last thing I have to say, uh, when you've got a role for a guy named Mort, <laughs> your first thought is Antonio Banderas? <laughs> well, I, I know that Paul and Zoe were really surprised when we came to them and said, Antonio, Antonio. Yeah. Mort. But, Perfect, you know, though. But what yeah. we loved is that we, we, when we thought about Calvin, we thought about who would be like the person that would drive Calvin crazy. <laughs> you know? and, and who his mother would just be completely smitten with. Mm -hmm. So... It, it, it had to be. It Antonio, had to be. <laughs> you know? And when he took off his shirt, put on overalls and, and, and a bandana, and a, and a bandana I, it was like Mort has arrived. But Mort we, is in the building. We loved the name Mort so much that we just all decided not to change it. <laughs>